And I think that in the rampant social media use, you see these seeds being planted for division that lasts long into adulthood. Now, one of your main topics is unity. And my God, what a divided (laughs) world we currently live in. When you give your unity-based talks, whether it's to a school or to a corporation, how do you approach that conversation? The focus has to be, I ask people to, rather than focus on the 97 things that you disagree on, that you hate the other person for, or that you're mad about, let's start with one or two or three things that we can all agree to. Something like, we believe that every human should be treated with respect and dignity. I, I'm hard pressed to find that most people, and even I'm not, I, I don't attach a religion to it or a political party, or, you know, you know, I don't even, you know, as a native Bostonian, I don't even, you know, condemn Lakers fans and, you know, and, 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 and you know, curse them or anything like that. But, you know, it's just like, can we just start there? Okay. So people need to be treated with basic human dignity. What does that look like? And again, what I have found is that when you start the conversation in a generalized space, as opposed to, let's just say politics, oh, Democrat, Republican, like Democrat, Republican for people now, those are like trigger words now for people. It's like, oh my gosh, you supported that guy, you hugged that guy, you donate. And so it's like, we're not starting there. You know, we could talk racial things that people are talking about, political issues, wars going on. You, you mentioned this group or that group, people automatically go to their corners. You can't start there. You have to start with basic conversations about what does human dignity look like? And in that space, how can we start to build that for people in our corporate spaces? There are people of different backgrounds. You know, you look, you read the diversity surveys and they don't feel like they belong. Okay, what can we do to have a basic core of respect in our organization, in our schools? People feel like they don't belong. Well, what's the thing that we can do to basically start having that conversation? Maybe we need to look at their curriculum and see how many people are excluded in the history books that people are reading. Maybe we need to look at the representation in our schools. Do all of the teachers look the same? Do they represent a particular demographic, whether it's gender-wise, racially, age-based, you know, whatever? Those types of things help people see something different. That's how I started. Look, my thoughts about the world are very much visible. You can find what I think of about anything. But this leads to the second point. We cannot take other people's opinions and just condemn them and shoot them down and tell them that they're worthless, they're this, they're that, they're racist, they're sexist, they're this or whatever. We have to, we have two ears and one mouth and I encourage people to use them in proportion. I don't have it all figured out. And I'm trying to work with people to figure it out because most people, they just want to be heard. They just want to be felt. And when they feel like that's not happening, they, they can respond in ways that are counterproductive, not only to the interests of other people, but to their own self-interest. So that's where I start. That is an incredibly human approach to it. And I, I, I love it. 